and also that it was the extremely counter to the founding principles of the United States. APAC exists today, if you look at its history, uh, as the result of a series of challenges to U.S. rule in law and governance. APAC does not have to reveal its sources of income or its expenditures to anyone. This is not information that's available to the public. And I heard Professor Walt upstairs say, well, APAC is an American organization. All its contributions come from Americans. We don't know that. How does APAC work? On a national level, it writes legislation. It writes the legislation, uh, and it, it, it's not even a secret it writes the legislation. I woke up to this issue about 11 years ago, perhaps like some of you, and I was appalled at what I discovered. What common denominator can we see from all of these regulatory failures that have occurred year after year after year? There are at least two. This is why it's so important for American voters to educate themselves about these pro-Israel PACs. They really operate under the radar. You have to look them up. But I talk to people, I talk about these issues, and people get angry. Ordinary Americans, this is not a Jewish-Arab issue in the United States of America. It's an issue for all Americans, and all Americans have a vested interest in fighting this. 